This is about the Modekne School on Babelvau on the plateau called Ibobang, which is in the middle of the large island of Babelvau. These young men are learning plumbing in order to put in the piping from the tanks, the water tanks, to each dormitory. These students learned various plumbing methods of conducting water from tanks down to each living quarter. Excavation continuing at the dock to make space for a boat building facility and a generator. As the school progressed, more needs were seen and uh, everyone voted for an electrical a diesel power generator so they could study at night instead of having to go to bed so early. They needed lighting. The generator was run only t two hours every evening at sunset until about nine o'clock. Kerosene oil for lamps was more expensive than the diesel oil for the generator. It was all figured out which was the most economical and kerosene lamps are very dangerous in the thatched houses. So eventually they all got uh, electric lights in their dormitories. We tried uh, to figure out whether a windmill would be useful and there wasn't enough wind. This is right at the doldrums near the equator and so only in very uh, certain periods of the year do you get sufficient wind for a windmill. And then you get too much, it would blow the windmill over, you get a typhoon. This man is making thatched shingles for the dormitory roofs, and this is a continuation of the construction of dormitories. Now with the chainsaw as you see, and here's the completed building and uh, an assembly period where fathers and mothers and students meet for meditation. Every morning before school is a period of meditation, quiet period. This shows uh, 200 students plus a few the teachers and some of the parents. This is in one wing of the building. And this is Ngerokabatang, the high chief talking to the students. Here is a librarian I brought in from Los Angeles, trained librarian to help us set up our library. And she stayed with us for three years. A very fine teacher, and adjusted very well to the situation in Karor and at the school. And here she is now starting the library with minimum facilities, rest period during the day. Palawans love music and almost everyone plays a ukulele or a guitar. The music was brought in to Palau during Japanese times and then augmented during American times with, uk with ukuleles and banjos and guitars. This is the farm. The only music Palauans had in ancient times was singing and rhythmic things with bamboo and bark and tree stumps. Here we are working and dancing. This old lady was dancing t and singing to encourage the work. Students and mothers preparing a place for taro to be planted or tabioca. I think this is a tabioca field. Here she is again dancing.
<laughs> Horsing around and fooling is part of the custom in Palau. Everybody enters into it. More of the fields where tabioca is planted, in which you see in the foreground. Commonly known in other parts of the world as cassava. Tabioca is boiled and then uh, the starch is extracted by pressing and eaten just like that with meat or fish. This American man is teaching some of the students some Western ideas in horticulture and planting. Here's another class being conducted in one wing of the school building. First, one of the first tables that were built starting to get furniture gradually. There's some cabinet making going on. You notice here in the office now we are beginning to get fairly well equipped. The gentleman sitting on the bench is Drotio Espangel, E-S-P-A-N-G-E-L one of the leaders who helped start the school with me. These are the tables which are used as desks. This is a brackish pond being built near the lagoon in order to propagate prawns. Prawns propagate in brackish water. There are prawns already out in the bay, but in order to uh, propagate them more efficiently, uh, these brackish ponds are built. The water comes in at high tide and then it's dammed up during low tide when the water starts going out. And that keeps the water at a certain level for the purpose of propagating the prawns. These kids are taking some time off to play. Now they're practicing high jump Every year on Karor in the city, there is a contest, athletic contest, and a fair. So they're practicing for the fair, for the competitions. Another view of one of the wings of the school. No partitions in the school building yet, but classes went on anyway. No chairs, so you sit right on the desk. Were there going to be chairs eventually? Yes, eventually there were chairs and benches built, and the school was completely furnished with cabinets, shelves, chairs, everything needed to conduct a well-organized school. These plots outside of each of the dormitory are prepared by the people living in the dormitory for flowers as well as some vegetables. This is inside one of the dormitories. a girl studying. This is a view in the office, corner of the office, not a dormitory. Yeah. Here are some of the boats coming in to the dock. That's my daughter with a straw hat on, Sandy Vitarelli.
the toe head of one of my grandchildren I see popping up there. And that's my grandchild po pulling the boat. Congestion, traffic in the harbor, coming for a celebration. These boats all came from Karor, which is about, by speedboat, about a, an hour and a half drive. A view of the completed dock. Everybody assembled for morning meditation. One of the leaders of the village talking to everyone. The old men, the Board of Education of the village of the Modekne. Modekne represented all villages of Palau. This gives you a good idea of the immense size of the building. This is just one wing. Here are some of the preparations for the opening day feast. Individual baskets are prepared for each person. They are woven baskets with bamboo, I mean uh, coconut fronds, and then served individually to each person. People are eating in groups according to their friends, relatives, or students. This is a history class by an old man who was the historian. All history in Palau in ancient times was oral. And so traditional legends and myths were narrated from one man to another. And here he is telling them about the old times. And this was their history class. Then it, those who have studied English and can write, they write it down. And uh, a book of legends is prepared from what the old men were telling him. This is another tank being made in addition to the ones that were already completed in front of the building. They needed more water supply, and so in the back of the building, another tank was dug. The dirt, the uh, surplus soil and dirt from this tank was taken out to the field where hollow spaces were filled in order to make a baseball field. It seems from these pictures that it would be an interminable time before that field was prepared, dumping just a shovel full at a time. But eventually it got completed, taking months to do. You notice the, some sit and watch and rest and others work. And when they get tired, the others take a turn. This is a, a well being dug for water in case of a drought. If a drought comes and there's no rainfall, this water will hold enough to supply drinking water for the community to hold them over during the dry period. These are fish nets being prepared for fishing.
who are excavating and digging, preparing a site for the generator. There were 90 acres altogether in the land that had been donated to the Modekne for their school. 50 acres, as I mentioned before, was for farming, the rest for housing, dormitories, roads, dock, and one for uh, propagation of prawns along the mangrove swamps. This land had been originally covered with those big trees and jungle. They had all been cut down or the stumps taken out by hand and now being prepared for farming. No tractors. They use these Japanese claws, steel prongs, very efficient tool. In Palau, the custom is for women to do all the gardening. Men very seldom do so. Sometimes young people, young boys, are enlisted to help. But the old men uh, do not, or mature men, do not uh, do farming. They go fishing, build houses, and do other work. But uh, the women do most of the farming. Well, this is a, an informal class, but most of the classes were informal. This is a dormitory where people from that village live. Improvised ping pong table. Studying going on at the same time, resting. Life is very casual, somewhat undisciplined and unscheduled, but things happen and things get done. In a highly concentrated, populated area, like in a city or close community, this kind of organizational pattern would not be possible, because here time is immaterial. They do not go on the basis of time. You do something and you get it done when it's done. But it doesn't have to be done at a specific time. Sometimes people want to go to Karor. They go down on the dock and sit and wait till the tide comes in and go when the tide comes in. If there's no boat, they go back and take a nap, go home, wait and come down the next day. This is a homemade putt-putt boat going into Karora with some of the students. There's our librarian sitting there. And there I am entertaining them with my violin. The Modekne people are prohibited by order of the high chief not to smoke and they're not allowed to drink any liquor, any alcoholic beverages at all. But they chew betel nut, that's one of their addictions. Betel nut is a narcotic that comes from a certain palm tree and almost everybody chews betel nut. That's traditional. That's traditional from ancient times. There are even uh, Janji, the name of the uh, librarian, is chewing betel nut, and I used to chew betel nut. It doesn't do much for your teeth, it makes them dark, but uh, if you brush them regularly, it's all right. This is a lesson in storyboard making. The uh, teacher is an old leader of the village who knows all the stories. This is a, another view of the lagoon and mangrove swamp where the prawn propagation is going to go on. 
very difficult task digging in that area. There's one of the channels where the mangrove swamp has been cleared and where one of the propagation beds is almost finished. In the morning at the school, people volunteer for certain chores and uh, then after school they go and do their chores. But it changes every day. Usually some will do one kind of work, they get tired of that, they list other help, and they change to another job. But laundry goes on all the time. Every individual is responsible for his own laundry. I don't know what these underexposed pictures are. I think a typhoon, yeah, a typhoon storm coming up. We had, it wasn't a real typhoon, we had a bad blow during one period of construction. I think this is the beginning of the wind coming up and getting prepared to button up. Yeah. Blowing pretty hard now. During normal times, the breezes are consistent, but not strong enough for windmills. We made tests of the wind, and it was averaged about seven or eight miles an hour wind, and that isn't sufficient. But this was sufficient, but you get it only infrequently. There it is tearing off some of the roof, putting big tarps up, Everything got soaked, and a lot of the temporary housing went down. School building, however, stood perfectly. You see the rain hitting my lens? <laughs> That thatch roof hadn't been finished in time and they're trying to protect it now with bamboo poles because usually when the, when the thatch roof is finished they tie it down with senate rope to keep it from blowing off during a typhoon. But a lot of these roofs hadn't been finished. Here they are trying to fix them. That was very dangerous work up there. It could be blown right off the roof. Here we are again in the typhoon, or semi-typhoon, mini-typhoon.